Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. Still outside. I promise I will get back to the Nerf Room eventually, unless you guys want me to keep doing videos out here by the pool. I don't mind. It's fun. And since the weather's not too hot anymore, I can actually afford to do this. It is really bright in my face though, so I'm wearing sunglasses. Today we have a blaster that I've wanted to review for months, being this absolute gem of a flywheeler. This is the N-Series Sprinter, the most anticipated N-Series blaster, period. Let's get into it. So the Sprinter is a 2024 release out of Hasbro in the N-Series line, currently making it the only flywheeler in the entire series. And they really went bold. It's literally a Raven silhouette, but we've got a lot to talk about, starting with the design. Some people really don't like the way this blaster looks, some people dig it a lot, and I can understand both sides. On one hand, there's a lot of tiny details built into this blaster that give it tons upon tons of personality, and the odd color contrast really gives it a lot more oomph than a lot of other blasters do, which just kind of blend in. This one is pretty bold, having this bright neon green all over it, but a lot of people don't like the design mainly because of how simple it looks. It's a giant slab of blue with a bunch of slabs of green and then this big thing of orange right in the middle with the barrel and it looks pretty basic when you just look at the shape and the color contrast alone. But I think that the mix of color contrast and the way that these shapes are integrated give this blaster a very unique and honestly pretty good looking design even if there are a lot of really really strange holes all over it. It's sort of the same feeling that Alpha Strike gave where it's skeletonized but it still has that kind of authentic nerf feel. It's really weird and you kind of just got to make your own opinion on the design. I can't really say anything else about it. Though I will say that while they did paint the Nerf logo, they didn't even bother to put it on the other side. Why did you guys do it with the Shadow Storm? Why? Why'd you do it with the Shadow Storm but you didn't do it for this? I, I can't ask that question enough times because it literally does not make sense. If Hasbro is trying to cut costs, then why did they suddenly not cut costs on the Shadow Storm? The worst blaster in the series. I don't know. What about the ergonomics? This blaster features a main grip, a foregrip, a stock, and a cheek rest, the whole four-in-one package. Let's go over the main grip first. N-Series grips are really, really good, but this is probably the worst one. And the reason I say that is for a couple reasons. It's not to say that the grip is necessarily an uncomfortable design, but it doesn't work on this blaster as good as it works on other blasters like the Infinite. Simply put, it's too small, and it's not designed for a flywheel blaster. The finger choil here isn't big enough to stand the rev trigger, so it kind of goes past the finger choil a bit and seeps into the bottom part of the grip where these two fingers would be. So it does feel a little bit cramping on the front end, and the, the rev trigger sticking out is very noticeable on your middle finger. As well as this dovetail here being very small and tight in this space, it's not the same as other N-Series grips, and it doesn't make as much sense on this blaster. It is relatively comfortable in the hand, but it is still too small and not as well designed for a flywheeler carrying six AA batteries with all this weight on it. So I feel like that was a little bit of an oversight on Hasbro's part. As for the foregrip up here, it is almost really comfortable except for this. What is this? Is it supposed to be a thumb hole? Is it supposed to be a rest for my index finger when I'm not putting it on the trigger? I don't understand what this hole is for because when you use it as a thumb hole foregrip, it is super, super low and really, really uncomfortable. And I don't like it at all. The only way to use this comfortably as a thumb hole foregrip is to have like one or two fingers up here, the other two fingers down here on the grip guard, which is really weird and doesn't feel comfortable at all. Otherwise, you can just put your four fingers up here and then put your thumb up on the front barrel thing here, which does not feel right, but is a lot more comfortable than actually using the thumb hole foregrip as a thumb hole foregrip. With that said, I think that this front part here is very nice and rounded, though I can see it being too small for people with larger hands than mine. As for the stock, this is one of the few cases where Hasbro made the perfect length stock that feels very, very comfortable to brace against your shoulder, along with a cheek rest that, while it isn't insultingly bad, isn't as good as other ones because there's no chamfering or filleting on the sides besides this tiny, tiny little chamfer right on the edge right there, and it digs pretty harshly into your cheek. So how does this blaster work? Well, it is a magazine-fed semi-automatic flywheel blaster, so you put your mag in, you don't miss it, you aim the blaster, you rev the rev trigger, you hold it straight for, I need to stop singing. You fire one at a time. 
And this blaster is, as a matter of fact, compatible with the Pinpoint magazine. Thank God they didn't freaking change it for this blaster because a little bit of me was thinking that they were going to do that. And a quick note on the magazine, it is made a lot better than the Pinpoint's magazine, but it sounds worse. Like when you load darts into this, the spring sounds like it wants to collapse at any random point. That hasn't happened and I found this to be not only better built, but a lot more responsive than the Pinpoint's mag. So I don't really know what to tell you guys. I don't really know what to think about this magazine. I do like it a lot though. And what I really like is how up here it is fully smooth. So it gives you the best mag insertion possible. Speaking of which, let's talk about the smoothness of operation. Starting with the mag release, this blaster, has a really, really unbelievably buttery, smooth, crispy mag insertion and release. I love putting mags in this thing and I love taking them out. This paddle style mag release right here is very clicky and very responsive, though it doesn't mag drop, which I don't really expect it to since you kind of have to pull the mag out like this anyway, but it is still definitely worth noting. As for the rev trigger and the main trigger right here, the rev trigger is unbelievably smushy. I don't like the rev trigger much at all. I do think it works, but it definitely could be a lot better. And for the main trigger, this is like 50 times better than the Raven. It's also like 50 times better than the Moto Blitzes and pretty much every other Nerf bullpup flywheel blaster I could possibly think of on the face of the earth. This rev trigger is so nicely lubricated and so good feeling. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely fantastic. It's one of the best triggers I've ever used on a flywheeler. This trigger blows the double punches main trigger out of the water. It's actually comparable to the hail fires trigger. You know, the best flywheel trigger ever made. I would almost compare it to this one. In fact, it's hard for me to decide whether the hail fire trigger is better or worse than this one. It's really, 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 really good. Well done on the main trigger. And on a side note, because it's so snappy and responsive, you can do that really fast. What I don't like, and I need to bring this up, is the jam door. It's this slidey jam door right here, but it's way too strong. When it is open or closed, the clip that holds it shut or open is so strong that you almost have to jam your finger to try and get it open, which makes clearing jams a pain that you don't wanna have to deal with at all. Luckily, I haven't had this blaster jam even once while I was testing it, so I don't think it's gonna be that big of an issue. Now, before we get to the firing demo, two notes. One, the rev up time, two, the plastic quality. The rev up time on this blaster is pretty fast. Compared to other stock Nerf flywheelers, this is one of the faster rev up times that I've seen. Granted, it has six batteries in it rather than four, so it's obviously going to have a bit more power going into those flywheels. But honestly, the rev up time out of this blaster is pretty good, no real complaints there. As for the plastic quality, it is really bad. This thing feels like an Alpha Strike product, and that really sucks because it's my favorite blaster in the entire lineup. But like this part right here just squishes in, over here squishes in, up on the foregrip squishes in. Hell, even the barrel, I can turn into an oval with basically no pressure. Back here on the mag well is the worst. Even up here, even where the batteries are, the battery door just squishes right in. They did not put even one cent into this plastic and that is depressing. Now let's see this thing fire. Still one in there. Pretty tight grouping, finger smashing it. So what mod potential does the Sprinter have? I can't even begin to imagine. It's literally a Raven, but with a way better trigger. What else is there to say? Not to mention this magwell is larger, the pusher is a bit stronger, and there's just nothing not to love about this blaster in terms of mod ability. I also like how large the flywheel cage is. I don't know, I just feel like you could do a lot with this flywheel cage geometry. It's hard to really say, but I will say that this is just a semi-auto flywheel blaster, so there's already quite a bit that you could do, and with this form factor and the size of this blaster, 
you probably could do quite a bit. It's really big. It's about as big as the Firefly, way larger than the original Raven. So what do I think of this blaster? The Sprinter is freaking amazing and it was worth the wait. Yes, this blaster is an N-series blaster, which means it shoots N1 darts, but just the form factor, the styling of this blaster, the trigger, and how accurate it is out of the box, everything about this blaster is honestly just really, really fun. And the little issues it does have don't detract from the actual user experience that you get when you use this blaster. I like it a whole heck of a lot more than I originally thought I was going to. And I honestly almost like using this more than the original Raven. I give this a very high recommendation for anyone who wants a flywheel blaster this year. That is just a nice, comfy bullpup. I wish I could say the same about the other flywheel semi-automatic bullpup that came out this year, but we'll get to that in a few days. Anyways, with all that said, if you want to get this blaster, I will link it in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Bye!